the audience and to discover speaking skills that she already has and to find what skills need some more attention. The time for this speech is 4 to 6 minutes. Thank you, Leo. Again, it's going to be Lisa. She's speaking on doing life right. Doing life right, Lisa. and guests, do you want to live life to its fullest? Do you believe that there are some ways of living that are more correct than others? Do you want to do life right? When I was eight years old, I had an epiphany. If I didn't live this precious life that I'd been given to my fullest potential, I would have to do it all over again. And I didn't want to relearn those same lessons that I'd already learned already as an eight-year-old all over again. So I was determined to start doing life right. I knew this deep in my heart. I wanted to be a writer. And I told my parents this because I longed to write. And I processed my life through words. It was the only way I really understood my emotions. I wanted to do life right. However, my parents said, oh, Lisa, you have an innate ability for math and science. My teachers agreed. They said, there's no money in writing. You're good at math. You like it. And I did pursue that. I was born at the tail end of the women's liberation movement. And what this meant is that my parents and all the women who grew up ahead of me had three things they really wanted for me, three dreams. One, they wanted me to make money. They wanted me to be financially independent so that I would never be dependent upon a man. Two, they wanted me to have a sense of fulfillment in a career unlike anything they'd ever had. And three, back to the money again, they wanted me to fully take part in being a part of the first generation of women who made the same amount of money for the same work as men for the same job. And they really wanted me to do that through a high paying job. And my parents had an additional desire for me. They wanted me to be part, they wanted me to be the first person with both sides of the family to get a college degree. I believed their knowledge and wisdom above my own heart, and so I followed their advice. <laughs> By the time I was 20, I had a degree in mathematics and computer science, and I was had a job lined up as a computer engineer. They said, go for it, Lisa. Don't be dependent on a man, ever. <laughs> However, the one little thing I didn't follow their advice on is I fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> so I married that man, and we're happily st still married, and, and I remained a computer engineer for several more years. And at that point, I said to my husband, and he to me, we both want a baby, and that's what my heart told me. And so I followed my heart again on that one thing, and I had my first daughter. However, in the back of my head, I still had those women, women's lives people telling me, oh, prove that you are equal to a man. Don't quit your job. Don't be a stay-at-home mom. That's just what the older generation were forced to do. So I didn't quit my job. And the, every day I got unhappier and more unhappy, and I was so confused. And then suddenly I asked myself, what if it were my daughter who asked me those questions, what would I tell her to do? What advice would I give her? And it was easy. You don't like your job? Quit it. What is your passion? Follow it. Do what you love. Follow your heart. I quit my job the very next day. Didn't know how I was going to do it financially, but my husband was on my side. We were a team. We were ready to go. Fast forward four years, I had my second daughter, and with her birth, it was the most impactful 
empowering experience of my life. I got exactly what I wanted. I had a home birth and a bathtub. It was just amazing. And I asked myself the very day she was born, am I doing life right? And I had that same epiphany again. It came back to me that I had when I was eight. If I didn't live this precious life to my fullest ability, I'd have to relearn all those lessons again. And 20 some years later, I didn't want to learn all those lessons all over again. And that's when my writing voice came back. And it was very exciting to me. And so I wrote. I wrote every day, fiction, nonfiction, and I started processing all my feelings again for the first time since I'd really been eight. And it was extremely exciting to me. And I realized that the whole point of the women's liberation movement wasn't so that I'd have this high-paying career, but it was so that I had a choice, a choice as a woman to follow my heart and to do whatever I wanted to do, not what other people were telling me to do, not what my even innate abilities were telling me to do, but what I wanted to do. And I set out on that day to start encouraging others to do the same thing, to follow their passions in life. A few years later, I started my second company, and I, t I named it Do Life Right Incorporated, as, because it was my aspiration to start doing life right. And my goal was to empower all people to live their personal best. Over the years, it's changed from a simple consulting company to a full-fledged publishing house. And I now share my words as well as words of many other people who are also trying to share their personal best with the world. Will I ever fully live right, life right? Will I ever do life right? I certainly hope so, because that is my goal. I don't want to have to relearn these lessons. I have many goals and dreams, and I set out to live each day better and better. And so my question to all of you today is, are you doing life right? Thank you. Amber, can you please again give me 45 seconds for us to move down any comments on these?